It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. Not sure I like the insinuations beneath putting that record at the top of our programme. <laughs> Why, you think um, they're implying that we are lunatics? Yes. Um, well, that's a, it's a Cold War song, though, isn't it? Yes. It's all Does about that make it better? Nuclear threat. Yeah, it's a little political song, because this is a lively, intelligent political debate show. So it is. So it is, yes. Don't forget. Mm. You know, but you put a, did you put a post on the Adam and Joe blog? Yes. To that end? I need to talk to you about that later. Oh, really? Why? Well, you made some execu- uh, an executive decision on behalf of both of us and announced it on the blog, didn't you? What did I announce? To do with the dog. Yeah. What about the dog? You, you announced a stance that the programme would take towards the dog on the blog. Oh, I see. A, bl- a blog stance. A, a boggin stance. A dog stance blog. Yeah, yeah. You didn't consult cornballs. Well, I thought we were agreed on that. I, well, let's let's talk about it later. All right then. We don't want to kick off the show with a terrible contretemps. <laughs> <laughs> Un contretemps terrible. It'd be good to kick it off. Let's make this a really argumentative Shut show. Shut up! Shut your mouth, you raving ponce machine. That's me. Yeah. Good morning, listeners. Uh, this is Joe speaking. Raving ponce machine. This AKA. Is, this is uh, Adam Buckley's Buxton. What's nice, my moniker? Nice guy. Oh, don't a good do, friend. Don't a good act friend. like. Don't come yeah. on. Rise to the challenge, Ponce Machine. What kind of a challenge is that? It's the Ponce Machine challenge. It's challenge the greatest challenge of all. Rude and aggressive. Yes, that First challenge. Thing in the morning. Can't do it. Oh. We've got a great show lined up for you, listeners. Do we? Full of mystery. <laughs> Things that even we don't know about. <laughs> a mystery program. That's true. Actually, no, we've got a lot, man. We've got a lot to pack in these days. You know, we get so many emails. We've got a lot of features. Uh, we've got a, a load of people responding to the phonetics thing that you yes. were talking about last week. Uh, they've got some, we've got some good sentences that you can say and make yourself instantly uh, sound as if you are the master of accents. It's going to be like children in need without the charitable aspect exactly right sort of excruciating you mean <laughs> <laughs> well if you took away the charitable aspect yeah yeah excruciating. Yeah. i mean the charitable aspect helps lift the, ex- the, the, the excruciatism yeah excruciatism <laughs> <laughs> and we should do some made-up jokes we haven't done that for ages yeah for uh, two weeks bit of pop ages. Pro- that is ages it is ages it's more than two weeks isn't it I th- maybe it has been. Yeah, because we were away the week before that. Ah, it's wow. Been, it's been almost a month. Well, I've got loads in my arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, listen, let's play some music, though, and uh, I can chat to Joe about the bogging situation, get that sorted out. Uh, this is Mumford & Sons with Winter Winds. That was Mumford & Sons with Winter Winds. They're working the mariachi angle, as our producer James was pointing out. That seems to be the sound du jour. You know, a lot of brass and mm. and kind of fiesta what feel. What is Mumford and Sons? Was it an old sitcom? It sounds like it, doesn't it? But no, they're totally... That's a new creation. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. They haven't taken that name from anywhere. I'm pretty sure they have. Have you? I yeah. mean, it's, it's a, it definitely has the sound of something. We'll do a little Google. Sepia tainted. Oh, you're doing a Google I'm, right in the middle I'm of gonna, the studio. No, not yet. I'm going to do a Google. <laughs> you're disgusting. So Joe's obsessing about stats there while we were playing that song. Well, the statistical aspects of our Black Squadron are very important to me. How else can High Command monitor the precise volume and tactical strength of the, of the squadron? Mm. Why are you laughing? Just laughing at your obsession with stats. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? But it won't be so funny when Black Squadron <laughs> bring you down very suddenly from out of the shadows. Why are they bringing me down? Because you're laughing at them. Oh, I see. Yeah, Black Squadron take themselves and their duties very seriously. Right, Black Squadron? Yeah, I could hear that. They agreed. <laughs> it did. Oh, I wish you could see the laughter. manic look in Joe's eyes. He absolutely. Uh, I'm not Such threatening your... strange love. I'm not threatening your, um, you know, s- stat supremacy. Listen, last week's Black Squadron Command, uh, which was felt pen tattoo, yeah. had 134 responses. 129 were published on our blog. Mm-hmm. And remember, if you do respond to the Black Squadron Command with a photo, you must, uh, by sending it in, you agree to have it displayed on the blog. Mm-hmm. And so there were five pictures that could not be displayed on the blog. For taste and decency reasons. For taste and decency reasons, yeah. Yeah. Might have a look at those later. <laughs> <laughs> Special focus on those. Uh, so that's pretty good, isn't it? That's a response of 134 members. That's a good, a very good squadron. Very good, yeah. Don't you think? Excellent squadron. Do you know what I think we should do? We should do some square bashing in uh, just off um, Berg Cage Walk. What, hurting square people? 
We could do that as well afterwards. Yeah, just running through central London. What square bashing? bashing? Square people. It's marching, you know. It's, oh. it's what military units do. Are you, were you in the army <laughs> at some stage? You know it's a lot a about all this stuff. It's a fairly well-known phrase, square bashing. Square bashing. I've got family in the British military. Right, right. Uh, yeah, but they, we could do some of that. You Black Squadron would look magnificent. Certainly don't you they think? Would. Dressed up in, in all their serried finery. serried ranks, with their toast and bacon bracelets. Mm. With their toast in their pocket. And Basically, they've just got toast around their, their problem pocket. biscuits. <laughs> yeah. Egg in mouth. With their pan hats. <laughs> the tourists would stop to take photos of that, don't you think? Yes, with their standing there with their pants in the street. It should be televised by the BBC <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon, don't you think? Get James May the to host it. The Queen should give a speech. People should lay wreaths. Why doesn't the Queen, you know, I would have more respect for the Queen if she did her Queen's speech with and her. And no one could have more respect for the Queen than you. Well, that's true. Already. No, I like the Queen. I'm pro-Queen, mm. right? Mm. All aspects mm. of Queen. Mm. Love it. But I would have more respect for Queen if she did her Queen speech with an egg in the mouth and with the bacon <laughs> bracelet and with some toast <laughs> peeping out of the corner of her little pocket it's there. Gonna happen. And gonna... with her pants, just her pants on, in the street. It's our democratic right. Is that, that's the, is that controversial to say that about the Queen? What have you said? That she should do the Queen's speech with just her pants on in the street with an egg in her mouth and toast coming not out of her pants. I think it's very uh, acceptable. That's not disrespectful, strictly speaking, is it? Because it's no, pure no, it's conjecture. Not. It's not. It's definitely not. Should, should we dwell on it? No, we should move on because it's absolutely not disrespectful. <laughs> All right, so then. we've got a new Black Squadron command coming up. Remember, uh, well, yeah, photos are charged. If you send a photo oh, in, we it's go, charged at the usual rate. You've got to say this stuff, right? We don't. I didn't do it so well this week. Our producer James has never actually asked us to do it. Joe's yeah, sort of yeah, taken yeah, it yeah, upon yeah. himself. No, he asks me. He doesn't burden you with Does that he? kind of functionality. Yeah, he knows that my brain yeah. is too small. Uh, so have I said everything that needs to be said? Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, we're going to issue a command, and remember, if you, didn't you are say a Black Squadron member, uh, it means you listen live between 9 and 9.30am to this program. Mm. We're going to give you a couple of words as a command. You have to take a photo that adheres to those words. Mm -hmm. Is that a good description? Very good. And then send it in to 64046. That's 64046. You didn't say... You said the calls will be charged at your standard rate, but you didn't say, and from more bars will be considerably more. More. Like Ant and Deck. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> mm, right. But they'll all be being sent from mobiles, will they? Unless you send them by email, in which case they're free. Or by fax. Yeah. Um, so, yes, we've given out the details for Black Squadron. They know how to get in touch. They know the text number. It's all taken care of, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, after Joe issues the command, we're going to fire off my first free play of the day, which is a lovely old bit of um, Scar oh, Lord from Kitchener. Lord Kitchener, talking about his wife's nighty. But uh, I always think that he's saying, my white nighty. So, he's he's complaining that someone's run off with me white nighty. <laughs> which makes me think of Lord Kitchener as a kind of uh, amiable cross-dresser. That's the way I like to think of this song. Mm. Anyway, Anyway, here's the, here's the uh, command for Black Squadron. Now, be careful with this command. As usual, take into consideration health and safety. Clear away any sharp or dangerous objects before you follow this command. Here comes the command squadron. Stand by. Sit in bin. Uh, uh. They love to sit in bins. <laughs> Our listeners. Do they? Yes, we've got pictures Look coming in. Look at that. There's a lot of people in very small waste paper bins. She looks terribly happy about sitting in the bin. She's going to crush that bin. That's a little basket. No, she's she's, not she's light in. as a feather. She's doing that. She's anonymous. She, that lady's just got one foot in the bin. Uh -huh. Is that really sitting? He's well in that bin. Look at that. Topless in his PJ bottoms. Do you like sitting in bins? Is this why you thought of the command? Uh, I just wanted to see some people in bins, and, and of course it factors into the big operation, the major black squadron. I mean, it's it's a field skill. Yeah. Um, you know, if squadron... this really happened in the army, though, there mm. would quite rightly be questions asked about whether it was appropriate to humiliate your soldiers this way. Well, why is it humiliating? Why is it humiliating to make someone sit in a bin? Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, go on. Well... Because Look you are literally... I mean, there's nothing humiliating about these photos. ...implying that they are Look rubbish in some way. 
Uh, they could be merely crushing the rubbish so they can fit more refuse in there. And that's better, is it? Yeah, that's just a very practical use of the bottom. Yeah. Now, listen, chaps, got the you're all intelligent uh, people. What we're going to do today is get you to crush oh, some rubbish on. with your bottom. Tell me that's, tell me that's humiliating. <laughs> There's <laughs> a guy stood inside. What's he done? Well, he's stuck his feet out the bottom of the bin, so he's like a walking dustbin. Uh, yeah. Tell me that's demeaning in any way. It's one of those big, tall <laughs> aluminium <laughs> dustbins those for um stainless steel ones and he's he's standing oh. right in it and he's got his feet poking mm. out the bottom like he's a kind of r2 this one's D2. got a touch of the like kenny baker's grub. feet poking out from the bottom of r2 <laughs> these are extraordinary photos congratulations black squad there's this someone in a wheelie bin that's outside. good he's that's outside his house in the street and that's his head poking out of a wheelie bin who's that those, person he's in the black wheelie bin as well that's Theo, the disgusting Mark one and a wheelie bin Is there, are there two of them in there Maybe you could, Mark took the photo, or one of them took the photo. <laughs> you could understand if they were in the re- recycling bin, right? Because the recycling bin generally is less whiffalocious. Yeah, soft stuff. But in the black bin, this maggots and stuff living at the bottom Look of our black bin, you wouldn't want to go anywhere near it. It seems to be very evenly distributed across the genders as well, the bin sitting. Sometimes we get a male or female bias. Uh-huh. Both the sexes love to sit in bins. Well, it's a sexy place. Mm. It just feels good on your body. Sure. Let's make love in the bin, baby, baby, I love you. You're a trashy, trashy woman, let's make love in the bin. That's the Isley Brothers, isn't it? Yeah. It's classic Isley Brothers, was used on a lot of Tarantino films. Mm. Um, and do you regularly wash out your bin? Sorry to go on a tangent, but I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, your big black wheelie bin? Do I regularly wash out my bin? Yeah. No. Why? Are you that confident? <laughs> In my bin's fra- yeah, fragrancity. Exactly. Um, I would wash it out if there was something really stinky in there. Right. If it started to stink. But otherwise, I just let it let it live. Sure. In in its natural funk. Let the little communities grow up. Yeah, in exactly. A yeah. bio, a, a diverse biological environment. Thing is, um, don't the foxes ever get to your rubbish and stuff and spill out the? Uh um, Not really. They've designed London bins so they fo- to be fox resistant. Fox yep. resistant. Umskar. Mm. It's a with Nell and I word. That's right. Mm. But sometimes when maybe it's because uh, we're a family, we, we we got so much rubbish. Sometimes it piles up. You can't close the lid mm. properly, and some councils have a problem with that. If you've got like more than six inches of the lid peeking up, they won't take your rubbish away. Depends what council you've got. Plus, you guys get through a lot of packaging, don't you? Because you're always foraging and you're picking stuff up off the street. <laughs> <laughs> and your car's full of rubbish, and it's absolutely you push true. that big trolley full of all the rubbish and all the bags <laughs> you have with you <laughs> when you go around the place. Isn't that you, I see? <laughs> Are you getting back this? at me because of the, the stat stuff? No, I, I just think that, uh, yeah. No, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a, quite a powerful image in my head. Look yeah, at that. There's sure. a whole family in wheelie family bins. One's in the glass, one's in the paper, one's in the can. This is glorious stuff. Thank this you, is a ma- What a day for Britain. You've made a couple of old men very happy. Um, and I'm not talking about us. Hang on. I should credit those people. <laughs> talking about a couple of other Joe, Johnny men. and Francis. I repeat, Joe, Johnny and Francis. That's extraordinary work. Going to play a bit of music right now and we'll stand down the squadron after massive attack with Karma Coma. Karma, karma, coma, karma, coma, chameleon. They come and go. They come and... That's what I always think when I see that song They're title. very different songs. They are different, aren't they? That one's, um, that one's more dark and that was. It is darker. Did you make it in Roma? Did you make, a, did you make an aroma? What's he talking about in there? Did you make an aroma? Did you make an aroma? I didn't. <laughs> did you? Whew, karma, karma. Oh. Did you make an aroma? Um, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. That was Massive Attack, of course. Uh, we are going to stand down Black Squadron right now. Here's the jingle. Hey, Black Squadron! Stand down. Your work is done. You've earned yourself a nice warm bath. And maybe a nice little bun. <laughs> Enjoy your bath and your bun. It's uh, 9.30. It's time for the news. I want to take you higher. Let's Sly in the Family Stone. Hey, listeners, this is Adam. Hey, this is Joe. This is uh, the Adam and Joe radio show here on BBC Six Music. I was saying earlier that the band Mumford and Sons, is that what they're called? Yeah. Reminded me of a sitcom, which is, of course, Sanford and Sons, yes. which was the American version of Steptoe and Son. Right. That's what it was reminding me of. Yeah. Well, it's easy, uh, easy mistake to make. It's only, only a three couple of letters different, letters different yeah. four letters. So there you go. That, that's what was in your mind. It's fair enough, man. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Hey, don't worry. Don't cry. <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> 
don't judge Oh my me. goodness, that's pathetic. <laughs> Come on, hey, it. pull yourself together. For goodness I did it, I did sake. it, I pulled myself together. Yeah, you really did. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, I'm on form. Back on top. So listen, folks, we're going to play the Retro Textination jingle very shortly. But I want to talk to you, Joe, and apologise to you Mm. about getting so worked up about this whole jingle business last week. On the show, listeners, I was complaining, actually in a comedic way. It was supposed to be like uh, deliberately over-the-top uh, comedic whining. Oh, yeah. I was complaining about the fact that everyone loves Joe's Retro Textination jingle, including my wife. And all I seem to get is abuse for using uh, garage band loops for for my jingles, right? I wasn't really that serious about it. I was having a little chickle chuckle, Mm. okay? Um, And very kindly and very loyally, a lot of listeners responded throughout the week by email and stuff, but kind of went too far the other way, like they were being really nice about my jingles, but then they were sort of laying into Joe a little bit. And I felt kind of bad and protective towards Joe because that was not my intention at all. Um, so I'd like to read out a message from John in High Wycombe, which I think is quite even-handed and redresses the balance a little bit. Hi, Count uh, Cornulees and Buckballs, he calls us. <clears throat> I just thought I'd drop you a line regarding all this jingle nonsense. Adam contributes a great deal to the show with his jingles, whilst Joe sits atop a lofty throne sneering at Bucky's efforts. This is How clearly... is this redressing the balance? Well, I think he's joking there, right? This is clearly becoming an issue for Adam. He's playing along with the fact that I was getting mock in. So, like you, he is also joking, even though he's offered us no indication Wait for it. of the fact. Yeah, no, I'm waiting. However, it has to be said that the retro textination jingle, in all its forms, is nothing short of spectacular, he says in capitals. <laughs> of all the jingles and songs, it is the one that persistently returns to my psyche, and at any moment I could break into song without needing to think of the words. I'm a trash man myself. He doesn't like it in the bin. Okay. Um, I wanted to send you this in the hope that, like a lucky shopper, I might be the thousandth emailer to praise Joe's wonderful song this week, and that this First. email might be the one to fully push Adam over the edge. <laughs> Yours, hopefully, reaching... Well, it's had the opposite effect. It's pushed you onto the edge. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's made me contrite and made me embarrassed that I was implying to the listeners that I genuinely resent your deserved success mm. with the retro textination jingle. I mean, I, I don't mind at all, but I can't help feeling you're, f- uh, you're fishing for compliments well, with, I w- with your emotional um, outlays. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You're be- <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> Some, you're, pl- you're playing kind of games, aren't you? Kind I, of. Didn't, I, I genuinely didn't book? mean to. We uh, always talk about that we've never read the games people play. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Sure. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, if that was if that was happening somewhere in my subconscious, then I genuinely apologise, Joe. Yeah, I l- that's all right. I love your retro. T- I used to listen to <laughs> Adam and Joe, but I listened to the podcast, not the live. Yeah. Well, let's see. You can hear it for I real now because it's retro text the nation time. Because I couldn't. I like to listen to Adam and Joe, but I listen to the podcast, not the live show. I used to feel a huge frustration because I couldn't join in with text the nation, but now my worries have disappeared. about love it thanks man brilliant jingle and retro text the nation this week is all about reasons you think you're psychic because of the fact that that was the subject last week yeah that's right and we've had many interesting and exciting contributions during the week thank you to everybody who emails and remember if you're listening to this on listen again or the podcast or something you too can join in with uh, this week's retro text the nation subject no with next week's retro text the nation show oh, shut up with this week's it. text the nation subject. yeah yeah yeah. thanks man yeah you know what i'm trying to say yeah you're saying that you too can join in yeah you bono too can the join edge in. hey <laughs> <laughs> hey i don't think anyone's made that joke before i'm the king this one is from laura Beatty. this is a good one okay dearest buckles and cornballs i'm pretty sure that i have the power to short circuit machinery when scared oh The haunted house at Alton Towers broke down whilst I was on it. Samurai at Chessington broke down whilst I was on it. X, no way out, comma, Samurai. Are they the same ride? I think X, no way out is a different ride, isn't it? Broke down while I was on it. Logger's Leap at Thorpe Park broke down whilst I was on them. And Space Mountain at Euro Disney broke down while I was on it. Wow. This was actually while I was actually on them, not just in the park. 
And on some occasions, I was left in the dark, dangling in the air for quite some time. <laughs> One time, I got freaked out watching my little brother on a mousetrap ride, and that broke down too. Whoa! So either I have telekinetic powers, or I'm really unlucky. Love, Laura Beatty. I would say you've got telekinetic powers, Laura. You know, X No Way Out broke down while I was on it as well, <laughs>、really? and I think it might just be a feature of the ride. It sort of pretends to stop and break down, and then goes backwards. Aha!、Uh -huh. It's quite painful and <laughs> uncomfortable and、yeah. abrupt ride. Yes.、Uh, when we went on it, do you remember us going on it about sure about ten years ago or something? I went on a roller coaster for the first time the other day. It was day. an X Files themed ride, wasn't it? That shows how old yeah, it is. Yeah, there you go. X No Way Out. Yeah, for the first time in quite a long time, I went on a roller coaster and was、mm. shocked by how violent it was. I was totally unprepared.、Oh, I love them. I came off and I was all aches and pains. I was like, "Oh dear, my back! Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. I'm too old." Do old? I like it. So that's pretty frightening stuff, isn't it?、That、I would、spooky. be disturbed if I was in a theme park with Laura Beatty. It reminds me of that film, The Fury. Uh huh. Do you remember? There's this kind of an indoor film、uh, uh, theme park. Sure. And there's some men on a on a wheelie wheel. Yeah. And it goes crazy, and they get flung off. Do you remember?、Uh, it's horrific stuff. It's wizard. It's absolutely wizard. Of course, it's fictional because it's in a film, and if that happened in reality, that would be frightful. Best bit in the Fury is、um, when she's hovering on the roof, or he's he's hovering and not on a roof. He's in a in a room and he's, he's, he's on the hovering、ceiling. above the door. That's、yeah. right. Spooky, scary. Good film. Have you got any retro textonations? Yeah, I've got one that isn't that spooky, but I was impressed about who it was from.、Um, this is from a guy called Phil Thornley.、Mm -hmm. Do you know Phil? Well, I know the one you're going to read. Yeah, Phil Thornley. Listens to this show. He co-wrote "Torn" by Natalie Imbruglia. Wow. He produced、uh, "Pornography" by The Cure, their best album, I think. Oh, and this is the Thompson Twins guy. Yeah, and the guy he that mixed. He was in The Cure for a while, and he、um, would it have been into the gap he mixed? Or? I think it.、Uh, or Quick Step Quick and Sidekick. Step and sidekick. Judy Do was the track that he talks about here. He was the recording engineer on、uh, on that Thompson Twins、mm. record. Anyway, Phil says, and that is impressive. That is a roster of impressive credits, not least the Thompson Twins connection <laughs>、mm. from Phil. And he writes in、uh, and says, "Dear Adam and Joe, your theme about psychic moments reminded me of this story. Although it's not psychic, strictly speaking, it is spooky and cosmic, and perhaps."、Mm. Precognizant. I was working as a recording engineer on a Thompson Twins record, a production idea that was de rigueur at the time. After Talking Heads and David Byrne did it、uh, on My Life in the Bush of Ghosts, involved recording what was coming out of a radio, sort of found music, random, arty, etc. We set up the radio and the microphone and hit record. The song that came out of the radio as the track rolled was performed by Judy Garland. Spookily, the track we were recording was called Judy Do about、mm. Judy Garland. Is this crap? He says at the end of the <laughs> no, it's not the message. No, not at all. Thanks, Phil in Kilburn, and、uh, we're humbled and excited that you listen to the program.、Um, not my favourite Thompson Twins track, though. Judy, do you remember that one? I do remember it. Yeah, it's alright. I, I was trying to think of a Thompson、one. Twins track that I could bring in as a free play. Couldn't really think. Hey. Of What would be a good one? What are you trying? What are you implying? The, the, that there's not a single Thompson Twins track that's good enough to you, play on the radio、yeah. in this day and age. Yeah, is that what you're really? Are you really saying that? Yeah, I couldn't think of a single that's one. That's an astonishing thing to say. Because we loved them. My, you've taken my breath away. I take your breath away. <gasps> you know, listen. There was no bigger Thompson Twins fan than、that's、nonsense myself or you. No, I、matter. can think of many.、Which、I'm going to I'm going to do a triple Thompson Twins <laughs> free play next week. Go on then. Yes, I, dare you. I will, and they'll all be winners. I'm not with sure. A Z. I'm not sure. Here's、will. one final retro text the nation email, all about psychic powers. This is from Heidi Wart. Once I was very drunk in a takeaway after a heavy night out. There was an idiot hole throwing his noodles at the wall. That's me. This outraged me in my drunken stupor, and I started to confront him, shouting, "Would you do that in your own house?" Nice. Soon we were engaged in a slanging match. It was quickly getting out of control, so my friend dragged me outside, consoling me. Oh, he'll get what he'll get. What's coming to him? I replied, "I hope so." Just then, the culprit ran out of the takeaway after me. Only to be suddenly hit by a car. What? I couldn't believe what I'd done. I was quite shaken. Luckily, he was fine and he walked away. But I will never use my dark talents again. <laughs> <laughs> Who's、That's、that from? That's pretty good, Heidi Wart. Heidi Wart. Don't mess with Heidi. She'll use her dark talents. Uh, especially if you're throwing noodles against the wall, you do you deserve. Why would you throw your noodles against a wall? Just disgusted with the noodles. What kind of attitude to that? Attitude to life is that. 
go into a noodle shop, order some noodles, wait patiently for them to be freshly cooked. Yeah. They're handed to you over the counter. You simply pick them up and throw them against the wall what and leave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what if they're That's bad like noodles? like a sort of art statement. Exactly. Because some of them would stick to the wall Maybe as well. Maybe he was a conceptual artist. Could have been. Exactly. Yeah. He's a... Wh- a you young, don't want to jump to conclusions. You know, think actions like that aren't necessarily thuggish. It could have been Anish Kapoor. <laughs> it, throwing noodles against the wall with, um, what's his name, Alan Yentob, sitting cross-legged on the floor with his chin in his hand, thinking. <laughs> <laughs> they do a piece in the culture Did you see show, Alan man. Yentob doing his thing on Anish Kapoor? No, I didn't, know. I, I love on documentaries like that the way the presenter, like, uh, like Alan Incorporates Yentob, themselves. Or the way they have to do shots of him looking at the work. Right. And the expression on Mr. Yentop's face as they, he looks at the work. They show you how to respond. Brilliant man, obviously, but uh, it's hard to come out of those things with that much dignity. Alan Tentyob. Yeah. That's what I like to Anyway, call listen, we're waffling all over the place. Thank you very much to everybody who uh, contributed to Retro Text the Nation, particularly there, Heidi and the other person. Uh, and, you know, I'd like to say this Laura. at this point. We, we do get so many messages in. We read them all. And I feel, I think both of us feel bad that we can't read more of them out, you know? And a lot of people... On air, yeah. On air, yeah. Mm. And a lot of people um, ask us to do sort of dedications and shout outs and stuff like that. And I always feel bad that we aren't able to do more of those. I mean, obviously we could, but then it would just dominate the whole show if we started doing them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm happy we don't. Yeah, exactly. So well, you're happy. Yeah. I, don't, I think why please one listener with a shout out when there's lots of others. Not That's what I'm there. saying. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I'd like to please them all is what I'm saying. Yeah. In an ideal world. Mm. In an ideal world. La, 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 la. Who was that by? Uh, it was by the Lion King. It was the Christians, wasn't it? Nobody knows. <laughs> What's this then? Ellie Goulding. Um, now, what do we know about Ellie Goulding? Let's tell them afterwards. Let's just kick it in. This is called Under the Sheets. Ellie Goulding, that is, with Under the Sheets. Uh, scores out of five, please, Joe. Uh, I would give that, mm, well, you see, I was about to be honest, and but that would have been a bit shocking. So I'm going to give it three. <laughs> Were you going to, was your honest response to give it none? Well, I think I would need to listen to it a few more times because it's wrong to judge a, um, a song on the first play, isn't it? Is it? No. No, that's what songs are designed for. Oh, do you think Gut so? Gut response, yeah. A lot of my favourite uh, albums I found impenetrable on first listening. Really? Don't you think we've discussed this before, but really good albums tend to uh, open up like a flower like over a beautiful time. Flower. Yes, but you have to kind of vaguely like the smell of that flower in the first place. I agree, if, that's true, but, if but the, sometimes um, when, you, when you think something's a killer on the first listen, it, mm-hmm. it'll fade after two or three plays. Yeah, but what if you think it's an absolute stinker and you never want to go near it ever again? <laughs> uh, would you know, do you not ever come back to albums sort of five years later? Well, I wouldn't go out and buy an album in the first place if I thought it was absolutely turgid, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have done, though, in the past, right? <laughs> Just no. because a magazine's told you it's good and, oh, then, I see. and then you've ended up buying it? Yeah, but only because they kind of have said, if you like this, you'll maybe like this kind of thing, mm. and I've fallen for that old... Um, anyway, I need to give Ellie a bit a bit more time. Horse chestnut. It reminded me of um, the work of uh, the lady from X Factor with a lot of makeup <laughs> Cheryl on. Cheryl Cole. Cheryl Cole. Right. Have you seen her new military dance video I thing? I did see that, yes. What kind of squadron is she part of with that uh, uniform? Sexy squadron. Sexy. Do you like mm. coal? Uh, I, I, well, kind of, yeah. Come, well, yeah. Do you want to kiss know. Cheryl Cole? I'd give, her a, I'd give her a kiss. A little kiss? On the pecker. Sure. On the pecker. <laughs> I'd kiss her on the... That's the word for lips. <laughs> Your pecker. <laughs> right? Right. Um, um, listen, here's a free lips. play, right? I want to talk about Cheryl Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl Cole's pecker. <laughs> um, do, here's a question. Do you ever drive your partner insane by playing a record over and over and over again? Uh, I don't get the opportunity. Do you not, uh, do you not like to play music around the house? Mm, uh, no, it doesn't happen that often. R- doesn't it? No, it happens in the car a bit more. Does it? And they've been doing it to me, but they, they've been enjoying Cheryl Cole's new single as well. Have I they? Asked. Really? Yeah, they and playing it over and over in the car? Mm. Really? Well, they t- they listen to Radio One. They listen to Moyles, and he plays it. Really? Yeah. I've be I bought this album by a band called Mayor Hawthorne called A Strange Arrangement while I was in America, and I really enjoy it. I've been playing it over and over again, uh. and driving my uh, girlfriend, lady partner, Potty. She not so keen. Well, she liked it at first, but now it's wearing thin. Uh. I can't get enough of it. So she's probably listening to the show at home. I thought I'd continue to ruin her <laughs> life by playing my favourite song from it. This is by Mayor Hawthorne. It's called Maybe So, Maybe No. Grab all they can, everything counts. 
us in large amounts. They're grabbing hands, grab all they can. Everything counts in large amounts. That was Margaret Thatcher with <laughs> Everything Counts. She was in depression in mode amounts. for a while. She was. In did the early 80s. That? Did you know that? Just after Vince Clark left. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. Did you? <laughs> they got Thatcher in. Everyone really? knows that. Because everyone was like, what? Thatcher's joined Depeche Mode. What's yeah. that all about? Yeah. And she used to produce um, a little sort of self-published um, magazine, didn't she? Yeah. It was called, called the Mag- Ma- Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> all about that band. Yeah. She yeah. was very big on the indie punk scene. <laughs> bondage <laughs> punk. <laughs> indie bondage punk. Yeah. That's why it was such a surprise when her political views went so, out, yeah. went so right. Isn't life fascinating? It is a funny old thing, isn't it, life? <laughs> it's it's a, a funny old world. It's, it's a chucklesome little, um, mm. little cup of soup yep. there, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so, Joe, you're a big I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here fan. I l- hate... L- no, I'm not. Are you, uh, you've you been glued to it this week? Nope. Right? Well, me and my wife have been glued to the I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. Right. We absolutely unreservedly love that show. Every year I have the same tedious fantasy about being invited to appear on it and discuss it in lengthy detail with my wife the actual practicalities of flying out to australia whether whether she would come out how exciting it would be to be in the hotel yeah if i was uh, if i was voted out fairly quickly i'd probably be voted out like within the first uh few vote offs i wouldn't mind because i'd get more time in the hotel all this kind of stuff we talk about (laughs) and then we talk about like probably i'm not going to get invited to be on the show because i'm not sufficiently famous mm. also they don't generally invite kind of ludicrous comedian type people on there because they've learned that they don't really work so well the dynamic is thrown off by those kind of people because they're too mm. self-aware you know they need more ridiculous type people on there we have all these discussions mm. every night it's like news night around at our house in front of i'm a celebrity get me out of here and but at the moment we're going through the difficult first week where you're getting used to the celebrities that are in there Mm. and there's always a feeling of disappointment like chemistry's not as good as in previous years you know you haven't got the really sparky people to to set things off colin and justin uh i, I like colin and justin you know the thing is that really you suddenly find yourself having opinions and relationships with all these people who were in your periphery um before yeah but suddenly you're like oh colin and justin now i understand like i'd never seen a show with them in it before you know i knew of them but now mm. i know about them i like colin and justin mm. yeah do you know colin and justin oh you're sure i know colin and Justin. do you like them uh yeah i like i like them as people yeah I like green eggs and ham mm. as sam i am i do i like colin that's and good justin. that's good good it's good to like things yeah he's an intelligent guy uh justin and um, hey, what about colin though are you saying he's well i'm sort of amused by the way their relationship is so clearly delineated you know what i mean like who which one is the dominant partner in that relationship i think it's the first time they've had a couple in the jungle in that which one is the dominant one in your relationship i don't want to go into that uh on the radio (laughs) cause all kinds of problems gino de campo did you Mm -hmm. know him nope never aware of gino he's some chef i think maybe on can't cook won't cook or one of those ready steady cook i don't know some cook show and he's a kind of a crazy italian man you know and he talks like this literally like this and he says mamma mia and things like that it's great joe you should see the program it sounds terrific gino de campo yeah good he's a big comedy italian he's a funny man. italian man yeah. i like he's like nice guy super mario brothers. yeah exactly like i'm super mario brothers uh, mamma mia <laughs> <laughs> mamma mia oh mamma mia joe i yeah, can't yeah, i can't yeah, believe yeah. this uh, that's oh. how he sounds like a larger than life character he's a larger than life character you're right uh. <laughs> you like a surpassed he's very enthusiastic speaking of broad it, uh italian caricatures i watched a very serious art film this week called the wages of fear right he's in that film well, there's a character called Lu- it was very intense it's yeah. called yves montand it's about people transporting nitroglycerine it's very famous the nitroglycerine yes there's a character in it called luigi (laughs) who is a big italian a man (laughs) and he's dressed exactly like luigi from super mario brothers with a little cap (laughs) a little bandana around his neck an open shirt and a hairy chest yes he's short and fat and his arms are sticking out to the side all of the time ping a mushroom A a boom a ba boom (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I couldn't concentrate on the um, master paucity of it. Yeah. Because I was hearing little um, one-up noises all Sometimes, the Sometimes, uh, you know, Italians do... You get a lot of Italians who do conform to that stereotype in a very pleasing way. 
<laughs> is that a problem statement? I don't know. It's a fun statement. I, I like it. Like, I, I like it when I meet French people who are exactly like a, a grotesque caricature of a French person. <laughs> oh, you like Aziz or come in? That kind of thing. Yeah. And they exist, these people. Yeah. I love that. Um, Joe Bugner, he's in there in right. the jungle. Do you remember Joe Bugner? Uh, is he a boxing man? Yeah, he's a big boxing man. And um, he's a bit South African, like not too extremely South African, but he's a bit South African. He's very funny because he talks about, he knows a lot about the jungle and he talks about, uh, you got to watch out for the ticks because the ticks are going to get up in your scalp there and they're going to burrow right into your brains and they will kill you before you know what's even happening. And all the rest of the campers are all sat around looking ashen faced and frightened with his stories of imminent death about the ticks and the spiders and all the things you got to watch out for in the jungle. But the big, obviously, Headline grabbing person in the jungle is Katie Price, aka Jordan. Right. Right. Where do you stand on Jordan? <laughs> literally, uh, <a> literal answer. <laughs> <laughs> Which part of her body? Uh, no boobs. Of course you do. Yeah. That's uh, you, anyway. But um, are you pro Price or anti Price? Any opinion whatsoever? Not really. Bl- sort of blanking. Blanking her? Price. Yeah. Did you ever watch her reality show with Pondre? No. Never. Uh, oh, yeah, no, of course I did. Yeah. I, I side with Pondre, though, don't I? Do you? Yeah, I'm on Pondre's side. Because you think she's too abrasive, too <laughs> brash, that kind of thing? <laughs> You're looking at me with your Louis <laughs> Theroux face as I'm if asking this is you, a really serious... It is a serious question. So you don't clear, like it so when we clear discuss you're gonna, hot topic uh, <laughs> so issues. so clear you're going to flip, flip this round. No, I'm not because flipping it round. Because obviously she's she's demonstrated how sensitive and lovely she is now, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not flipping it round. I'm just saying maybe it's my natural desire to side with the underdog, but I feel sorry for the girl. Okay. And I like her. There's something I like about her, and I can't tell what. Maybe she reminds me of an old girlfriend or something. Listen, surely they should fly you out for the ITV2 programme. That's what I'm hoping. I mean, I I agree. You might not be uh, famous enough a public figure to go on the actual programme. Yeah. But you could be with that parade of uh, (laughs) people on the ITV2 programme. Desperate Losers is... Is that what you were thinking? (laughs) No. (laughs) Commentators. Yeah, yeah. They'd put you up in the hotel for that. Come on. I wish they would. Honestly, they've put a lot of uh, other Desperate Losers up in that hotel. (laughs) Surely I could fit in there too. But I am obsessed by Katie Price a little bit, right? I like the fact that when she's in the jungle, she doesn't wear so much makeup. She looks very beautiful, I think. Oh, God. And there's something nice and vulnerable about her. Yes. And I feel sorry for her. It's like, I mean, I know, yes, obviously, she courts publicity and she's sort of obsessed by it and she's uh, insane in many ways. But I do believe there's a little scared girl underneath trying to get out. And I want to help her. Do you understand? Also, she's, you know, il y a du monde au balcon. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you know Listen, what I'm there saying? there are some magazines I could recommend to you that you might like reading. <laughs> I've got a song, though, that I want to play for you. I was oh. moved to create a song uh, for Katie Price. Right. And you remember last week I was getting you to sing along with that hymn? Yeah, yeah. This, my singing on this is a little bit like that because I got this uh, jingle. This is a prepackaged jingle that I'm singing over. And I couldn't, I was sort of making up the tune as I went along. But anyway, here's my song for Katie Price. It can't be easy to go back to the jungle without Pondre close at hand singing insania trying to unlock your celebrity chest and instead you've got the battle axe from how clean is your house putting you down for playing the same game they're all playing but getting paid much much more Katie Price, take my advice Get away from the flipping lot They've only got your breast interests at heart Like you're some kind of tart Katie Price, it can't be nice Getting cockroaches in your bra While Anton Deck go ha ha Oh dear Katie, are you alright? You were in trouble in the water there Jordan, let her go Don't you know that you're smothering a sweet girl called Kate Who doesn't have your tough exterior Katie, 
Have you worked out the price of fame? Maybe it's too high a price to pay. How I wish that you'd get back with Andre. So, a song for Katie Price there. Very t- profoundly moving. Thank you very much. I'm hoping maybe she'll hear it and I can get together with her. Well, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, why don't you just go there? What, fly myself to Australia? Yes. It's too expensive. You could go economy. One of those student flights that stops at ten places. No. They're, they're cheaper than you. Listen, I'll pay. All right. But I think you should go there <laughs> and really try and get in there. Yeah. Force yourself upon them. It's my dream. Well, it can come true. Thank you very much. Here's some music now. After this, I think we'll have a go at Text the Nation. This is Echo and the Bunny Men, The Gilling Moon. It's my mum's favourite Bunny Men song. Really? Loves it. She's got very good taste in music, your mum. She does, yeah. Travelling Wilburys. Maybe if I'm busy at all, she could sit in for me. Mm-hmm. Do you think you'd do a good show if you co-presented with your mum? That's an interesting idea. That is a very interesting idea. I mean, you could have your mum and your dad. That would be a double whammy. Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure if I could handle that. I think it would make very interesting radio because it would change the balance of power somewhat, wouldn't it? She's a political firebrand. Your mum? My mum. She loves the Daily Mail. Political Russell brand. (laughs) Yeah. Do you think she'd say something awful? Possibly. What, something politically provocative? Well, I don't know. Something out of sync with the average uh, Six Music listener. Yeah. Uh, she is a conservative with right. a small C. Right. Um, and, you know, she's open-minded in many ways mm. and she's a wonderful woman. She may well be listening right now, mm. so I don't want to enrage her. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yes. I think she'd be great. I think she would be great. I think she should take over from Lauren Laverne. Well, that's an interesting idea, yeah. I mean, I know Lauren's only just moving to the morning slot here. She on loves music. smooth jazz. <laughs> my, my so mom. do the six music listeners. Yeah. You think they'd be cool with that? Le jazz. She, her favourite CD is Jazz on a Rainy Afternoon. Perfect. Hello, this is Adam's mum, and now here's a bit more jazz. A jazz is jazz. A jazz is jazz. <laughs> so, listeners, I think it's time we got into Text the Nation. Let's bang off the jingle. Why not just what? to delineate the whole thing? Vaulting. Text the nation. Text, 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 text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Jazz. Anyway, folks, um, we're going to talk about I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here Again. Very briefly, just to kick off this uh, Text the Nation, right? Put it in some kind of context. Kim Woodburn. Do you know who she is, Joe? Nope. She's the battle axe from How Clean Is Your House that I right. referred to in the case. Oh, right. Price Kim and Aggie. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Kim and Aggie. You see all these people, again, I'm aware of their existence, but suddenly I understand what the deal is, having seen them in the jungle. Anyway, she's a total nightmare, as far as I can tell. Overbearing and just larger than life in every tedious way possible. <laughs> And one of her things is being brutally honest with people. She's one of these people who says, I I say what's on my mind. I can't help it. I can't help it, love. I absolutely have to say what's on my mind. I have to be honest. And people like that just make me want to end it all. Because, you know, it's like you don't. You don't have to say what's on your mind. You don't have to be brutally honest. Uh, That was one of the weird things about Ricky Gervais's film, The Invention of Lying, which I haven't seen, incidentally. Mm, So Good, good. I don't know if uh, I, I can't come at You're too much. You're talking from an ill-informed exactly. viewpoint. Yeah. That's right. Go, yeah. shoot. Absolutely ill-informed. It's my favourite viewpoint. <laughs> but the um, the weird thing, but I've seen the trailer. Oh, right? that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So the problem I think, having not seen the film with the film, <laughs> is that you know he his idea is that if you live in a world where. Um, there's no lying then that means that everyone is immediately brutally honest and says like the worst thing that's on their mind sure that's not true that's not what lying is about lying is about uh, saving people's feelings a lot of mm. the time you know that would be the invention of rudeness or yeah. the invention of politeness what what would it be but it's something else isn't it yeah just, just because you can't lie mind. doesn't mean to say you're going to go around telling everyone they stink you know what i mean anyway mm. so kim woodburn right goes up to justin um from colin and justin love them both and she, totally unprovoked for no reason at all, goes up to him and, and points at the several moles that he has on his handsome face and says, you should get rid of those, darling. You should get them lasered off. Why, why have you got them on your handsome face there? You'd be much more handsome if you got rid of those moles. And he was totally shocked by this, right? And totally taken aback. He didn't really know how to respond. He was sort of flawed for a few minutes. And then after a while, he got his bearings and sort of said, well, that's kind of a rude thing to say. Why would you say that? 
She's like, but I'm just being honest. I've got to say what's on my mind, dear. Have to. I have to be honest. You should get those lasers off. You know, you've got a handsome face. And, and those, those moles are spoiling them. This, uh, incidentally, coming from a woman who is not exactly an oil painting herself, right? But it seems such a weird thing to do, to go what up. What did she get lasered off? Uh, her face. The whole face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he should have come back with. Exactly. Well, why not laser well, your you whole face off? You should get lasered off entirely. <laughs> exactly. She'd just be blasted by a laser. If I had my laser with me, then I would laser you into a thousand tiny pieces. Little powdery puff of flesh and fabric. <laughs> and then <laughs> emptiness. With my laser. Like in, like in uh, Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. Right. A bloodless explosion. Yeah. A human pop. That's right. <laughs> 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 that is what I'm holding out for. I'm hoping that's mm. going to be in the last week if I'm a celebrity. On, mm. That's going to be one of the uh, Bush Tucker trials. That would be good if they had a, <laughs> a satellite. You see, this is, I'd watch, I'd be interested if they had a, a laser-armed satellite above the camp. <laughs> and they could just take, a, take them out very suddenly. Laser Kim Woodburn. Um, anyway, so it, it very much reminded me that that kind of person exists in the world. You know, the kind of person that absolutely feels they have to say what's on their mind, regardless mm. of other people's feelings. and They don't really think it through. But then everyone does that themselves every now and again. You say things, you are perhaps too honest or you feel compelled to be honest with a person and then regret it afterwards. There was a guy at school, and this is how much trouble I'm having summoning up uh, some kind of anecdote along these lines. There was a guy at school who used to take great pleasure in, uh, in pointing out zits. I remember. Do you remember? Yeah. Everyone else would very politely pretend that the thick layer of, <laughs> of medicated makeup. Witch hazel. <laughs> and, witch, and witch hazel and weird peroxide products on your face <laughs> was invisible. Yeah. But this one guy would go around and go, God, look at that strawberry. Yes, exactly. You running a pick your own thing? Yeah. You'd say stuff like that. Make you feel really self conscious and stuff. It's mm. bizarre. But then also, I'm thinking about incidents when you're perhaps with your lady partner and having a conversation about who you fancy on TV or whatever, or, uh, you know, those kind of conversations in a fictional world. Who would you be allowed to have an affair with if you met them? You know what I mean? Do you ever have those conversations? Sure, sometimes. And you feel as if you're on an equal intellectual footing with your girlfriend, stroke lady, partner, man, partner, whatever it happens to be. But and so you're honest with them, right? You're just having a sort of fun discussion. Suddenly they take offense. They get really upset. And the whole discussion is like, whoa, it's, where's this gone? You know, and suddenly the lady partner's crying because you have expressed an interest in snogging. So how would, Cheryl you, uh, Cole? how would you encapsulate this best for the listeners? Times when you have regretted being honest with someone or mm. got into trouble. Or could it be the, the other way around? Someone who's been too brutally sure. honest with you. Yeah, it goes both ways. It's going to take a certain bravery on the listener's part to admit to some of these things, perhaps. Our, our listeners can do it. They're, they're bold. They're brave. very brave. The text number is 64046. The email is adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. If you'd like to contribute to this week's Text the Nation. Here's a free play for you right now. This is a duo uh, called Neulander, and they are, uh, I think, New York-based, a man and a woman. And this is a sort of enjoyable electronic... Uh, over the top track that they did a few years ago. It's, it sounds like kind of a mess for a little bit, this track, but then it kind of congeals into a fairly stirring little epic at the end. Hope you enjoy it. This is Neulander with If You Could. Cure. Boys don't cry, cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did that together. Sure. I said the name of the track, you said the band. It Saves was, time. It was, it was a presenting partnership working in perfect harmony. Yeah, exactly. Completing each other's sentences. Like do you remember, a um, Burke. when, do you remember that party that we went to when we were little and, uh, there was a guy wandering around and he'd had a bit too much to drink and we were playing that song or someone was playing that album and, uh, he came up and he's all teary and he goes, boys do cry, you know? And then he wandered off in, wow. a, in a drunky daze. <laughs> I've forgotten that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, listeners, we're going to do some made-up jokes. We haven't done any made-up jokes for a few weeks, and we're inundated with them. Great bucket loads of them regularly. So we fished out the best ones, and we're going to read some right now, correct? <laughs> Adam stuck a plastic <laughs> fork up his nose. I'm hanging it off the bridge of the nose. Uh, Is it the bridge? That's that what we're going to do? We're going to have the jingle drop. Yeah, let's have the jingle. Activate. I'm a funny person. I often make up jokes. My jokes are more amusing than those of other folks. When you hear my joke, I think you'll find that you agree. Come on, you're all invited to a made-up joke party. 
And um, as Joe said, we do get a huge amount of these through. I mean, it is ridiculous. Most of them, it has to be said, are no good. How is your sort of vetting going? Are you vetting, Adam? Are you Google searching the jokes that you read out? <sighs> I'm trying to be a bit more stringent because in the past I've been too easily impressed by puns and one-liners and mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to avoid those a little bit. Yeah. You know, because I, I accept the fact that I've been too credulous and too willing to believe that there are made-up jokes. In the end, it turns out, generally, that Tim Vine has done them at some point. How Vinyl about you? car. Well, I'm just doing a little bit of last-minute vetting now. and I, are th you? I think I've cleared my first joke. OK, OK. From Alan and Joe Jenkins. How do you make a questionnaire laugh? I don't know. You tickle its boxes. You tick all its boxes. Hey! hey, hey, hey. I just Google searched, you tickle its boxes, nothing coming up. Can so th th there's nothing but Tickle Me Elmo links coming up. Right. So that's good, isn't it? Alan that and Joe good. Jenkins, that's officially an authored joke. Well, do you know what you should be able to do? No. <laughs> you should be able to register jokes with the PRS, the Performing Rights Society. Ah. Uh, people in the business of music will know that the if you're a musician and you have a hit record, they've really got the... Um, profit distribution system really nailed better than any other industry so if you could apply that structure to joke authorship mm. don't you think i mean alan and joe jenkins they would be uh making some coin every time that that joke was cracked yeah but really I mean, it would be I mean, difficult you... to monitor and register it <laughs> you want to monetize <laughs> uh, wordplay <laughs> man once wi-fi is installed in the brain that, sure. that which is within the next two weeks apparently Hooray. then that kind of thing will be feasible no in my life it'll be rubbish wi-fi uh, my brain. Uh. Have you got any jokes? Sure, I do. I got loads. Here's one from Toby McCarthy. Okay, as you said, I'm gonna I'm, gonna. I'm gonna Google some some of the. Key Actually, terms. this does need googling because after my right. lengthy speech about avoiding simple wordplay, this is mm, um, mm, mm. classic and maybe semi-obvious wordplay, but I like Shoot. it. Shoot. Hey there, buckles and cornballs. Where do above-average electricians do their shopping? Hmm. Sparks and Mensa. Hey! That's good, that's good, that's good. He says, a pleasure. Give Boggins a kick from me. That's from Tom McCaithy. Google hit number two. Sparks and Mensa is a recycled line about M&S from the 70s. Not only is it a real groaner, dot, dot, dot. What? <laughs> Google hit number two. Okay, You're well, what about there. this? All right, Google this then. Well, hang on, it's my turn. Johnny Googles. It's my turn. All right, you do one. I'm going to do one that doesn't get any Google response. <laughs> What's round and sounds like a trumpet? Don't know. A crumpet. Come on. That, the best response, Google come on. that one! The best response I've had to this joke was a sympathetic half-grin from my girlfriend. Thanks, by Kevin Shaw. Yeah. Well, you got another sympathetic half-grin from me, mate. Right? Is that a bit aggressive? Hey, what are you Googling there? What's round and sounds like a trumpet. <laughs> Anything? No, nothing. <sighs> nothing. So, nothing. Cornish scores two. Two nil, two nil. Shut up, shut up. Two nil, two nil. <laughs> boot, boot, fight. <laughs> boot, boot, football fight. talk. Very nice. All right, Danny Dyer. Here's one from Sam Bowman. Did you hear? Did you hear about how Velma from Scooby Doo's teaching evaluation exam went? I can't believe you chose this one. What? This is a good one. Go on. Yeah, she would have gotten an A with it if it weren't for those pesky kids. Velma from Scooby Doo's teaching evaluation exam. And she would have. Oh. She would have gotten an A with it. Well, hang on, I'm getting some responses if off this. Weren't those pesky kids. Uh, I liked it, Sam Bowman. Needs further investigation. That Lucy, chuckle. Lucy, if you can don't investigate get that Lucy. one further, oh, that's please. Totally legit. You can run that through Google. Thank you very much. Have you got I another one? Got that one. Cool. Sure, I've got another one. Come on then. Why is it easy to buy clothes that fit Derek Akora? I don't know. Because he's a medium. James Pestel in Wind. Oh, I'm going to make this mistake again. Wymondham. Wyndham. Wyndham. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Let's stop Googling them. It just brings the whole thing down. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, it brings me down anyway. <laughs> Here's one from Martha, which I really do not believe needs Googling. This was, she says, this was made up by my co-worker, Mike. The farmyard animals have entered a competition organised by the farmer and his wife. A marquee kitted out with decks, lights and a glitter ball is the prize, which goes to the animal who presents the best Shakespearean <laughs> this passage. Is good. This is good. The sheep does Macbeth, the horse does Hamlet, and the cow does Richard the Third. The farmer and his wife have a tough job choosing a winner, but finally they announce, Cow is the winner of our disco tent. Nice. <laughs> Brilliantly designed. Marvelous. What a piece of verbal architecture that is. Yeah, she says, please kill, please kill Boggins. Huh. Uh, cow is the winner of our, dis the winner of our disco tent. Very nice, Martha. Yeah. I like that one a lot.
You got another one there? Well, I d- I'm reading through them and I don't know. I, maybe I was a little bit tooty when I picked them because they don't seem so funny now. <laughs> Come on. Uh, this is a good one. Kevin Corr sent this in. Have you heard about the new BBC sitcom in which a young man advises his stepmother about the British weather? Mm. It's called It Ain't Hot Half Mum. Nice. He's a <laughs> reporter on the Liverpool Echo. Is he? Cool, yeah. Well, quite rightly. He's a genius. OK, I've got one. This is from Ivor Hatton. Uh, dear Adam and Joe, what, what, what does any aspiring person working in journalism or the arts want to get in their Christmas cracker? Oh, this is a good one. A Pulitzer surprise. Pull Come it on. Surprise. A surprise. Woo-hoo! That's Brills. Brill skills. Here's a very simple one, which may well have been made before, but I just it made me chuckle. Uh, this is from Matt in North mm-hmm. London. What do you call a racist wizard? Oh, Adam. Nick- I don't know. I'm worried. Or oh, I'm already very worried. Nick Gryffindor. Oh, nice. Good. <laughs> Good. Now, that's quite probably funny. quite contempo, yeah. isn't it? Harry Potter, a little bit. He's of Harry only Potter. entered the public realm. Yeah, yeah. Like an old stinky waft like in the last waft. month or so. Sure. Well, that was very good, very good. <sighs> That's cathartic, isn't it, getting made-up jokes just, out of your system? I mean, I've just. got thousands more, but I think we should stop while we're ahead. Yeah. Or, uh, or, or not. Um, here's Doves with House of Mirrors. Doves. It's been their year, Joe. It has, hasn't it? Yeah. They're having a fantastic year. They're going to look back at 2009 and think, oh, lovely, loved it. What a great time Vintage. Mate, you know what? They're an mate? Aussie band, they're Aussie, aren't they? Yeah, they're all yep. from Australia. Oh, 2009, oh, what a, yeah. mate. What a cool, cool Oh, program. that year was an absolute doozy bonzer year. I still, every now and again, I still have a tinny and think about that year and then I surf, go surfing. Very typical, very stereotypical. No, that's what they're like. Productive and racist. Not racist, that's what they're like. Very racist. They love surfing and drinking beer and surfing. Disgusting. And Barbies and shrimps, that kind of thing. Why is that racist with corks hanging from their hat? I'll tell you after the show. All right, then. Um, If you enjoy this programme, then you might like to visit our blog. It's at bbc.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash Adam and Joe. It's got all sorts of bits and bobs on it. Mm. It's got animations that listeners have made. Amazing animations. Beautiful drawings that listeners have beautifully drawn. Yeah. Uh, It's got little posts by Count Buckley's and some by Cornballs. Many of the songs, our Song Wars songs, are available to download there. And don't take the blog at face value. Don't think that what's on the home page, the opening page, is all there is. Have a little search. Dig around. Open the bottom drawers. Have a little scruffle. Lift up the bits of newspaper lining and see what's tucked underneath. Nice. Shove your hands down the sides of the sofa there. You might find more than a 50 pence piece. Some old filthy (laughs) magazines. That's the ultimate find, isn't it? It is. Uh, Filthy mag. Daddy's dirty mag. You don't see them in the woods so much anymore, do you? <laughs> um, anyway, listen. Uh, do you love the film Predator? Yeah, sure I do. Yeah, sure you do. I've been listening to a lot of uh, film soundtracks recently. Have you? And I've been particularly... Do you listen to film soundtracks ever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like while you're, while you're working maybe to have some adventure music on? <laughs> Not so much. If you're sometimes, if I'm writing, I like to have a bit of a, exciting music on. Do you know, you? get you into the zone. Ah, I like the mellow ones. You know, do a bit you? For each second well, auto. yeah, the adventurous some ones can be adventurous. Some ones can be a little bit distracting sometimes, mm. or they can make you start typing too fast. But it's also fun to listen to adventurous some music while you're say cleaning, mm. or maybe tidying up the kitchen, or making sweet sweet love, or making sweet sweet love. Adventuresome music from films makes daily life exciting. It's like you're in a film. It's like you're in a film. So one of my favourite soundtracks is Alan Silvestri's Predator soundtrack. And sure. For my free play, and a lot of people have been emailing us asking what free plays are when we say free plays. But right. most of the music on the show is brilliantly assembled by our producer James and six music boffins. Mm-hmm. But three songs a week each, Adam and I get to pick from our own collection. And we can pretty much play whatever we, we want. Can play whatever we want. As long as it's not sweary. Yeah. Hence me playing a track from the Predator soundtrack. It's, I haven't got no, any thing in it. Like, it's not a song. Sure. It's orchestral, but it's a terrific soundtrack. It's Those very great rhythmic. kind of tom-toms oh. or whatever it is. Yeah. So if you're driving, this is going to make the next one minute and 50 seconds really exciting. And what part of the film is this? What are we looking the, at? It, this track is called Jungle Trek. Ooh. So we have uh, Svartzi and all his chums yeah. trekking through the jungle, being tracked. Billy D. Williams, is he in there? Oh, everyone's in there. Sure. Uh, being tracked by the Predator, who, that is moving through the jungle with its weird translucent um, refractive cloaking yeah. device switched on. You can do that, you know, that's real technology. 
with those little cameras that show what's behind you in yeah. front of you. It's all real. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about that, and I don't think it works. Come we on. We can talk about that another time. Listen, enjoy this. This is Alan Silvestri with Jungle Trek. There is no typing going on. <laughs> they don't have typewriters. They're on a jungle trek. <laughs> Trivialising that piece of music. Come on, guys, you've got to get the copy in. And the deadline's looming. Billy D. Williams. It's Carl Weathers, of course, <laughs> Carl in that Weathers. film. Of course it was. Man, Very do you remember when we went to see music. that in... Uh, where, where did we see that, Joe? We saw that in Paris. Of course we did. Yeah. In Les Halles. Les Halles. And we were so excited because it was the version originale. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we this, were too uh, young to see it in Britain, uh, weren't right, we? But yes. we were young enough to see it in France. With the subtitles. It was so exciting. Oh, man. It's very loud. They yeah. play films loudly as well in uh, Paris. So they certainly used to. And, um, I mean, you, do you remember pretty much everywhere you saw a film? Yeah, pretty much. I'm good at that. Yeah. yeah same here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say to my wife, like, hey, do you remember when we saw this film? Hasn't got a clue. Like, can't remember when, where we were, what we were doing. I was like, what? But there's a men, there are many problems between you and your wife, aren't yeah, there? Yeah. Many, many problems. Like, you can't remember where we saw Men in Black, darling. But Sylvester, <laughs> he's a genius. And the combination of rhythm and orchestral there is, is superb. He did Back to the Future, of course. Yeah. Course. Other great films like Flight of the Navigator, of Overboard, Mac and Me. Overboard. <laughs> Overboard is a brilliant film. <laughs> Golden Horn and Kurt Russell. Come sure. on. How is it a brilliant film? It's good. It's really good. Uh, that's your argument, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's warm. It's lively. It's witty. Yeah. Lucy, you love Overboard, right? <laughs> She's never heard of it. Mac and Me. That's a good film. Mac and Me. I'm not they sure if it's built a whole Mac McDonald's for Mac and Me. That was the E.T. ripoff, right? Yeah. It's a little boy in the wheelchair. <laughs> is Mac and Me actually worth watching? Never seen it. <laughs> have you ever seen overboard of course i've seen overboard are you genuinely pro overboard i swear to you lots of people love overboard pro overboard yeah i'm pro overboard definitely okay lots well i'm gonna revisit it. it now it's good you and your wife will, it'll heal a lot of the rifts will it it's like emotional glue <laughs> <laughs> seriously that should have been on the cover yeah it's like emotional glue Fantastic. joe cornish bbc six music hey have, has your name ever turned up uh, on an endorsement like on a on a dvd or anything uh, yeah, on a book or two. Is it? Yeah. Oh, did it make yeah. you feel good? Yeah, it did make me feel good. It's on Robert Popper's, um, Time Waster Letters, Very Volume good, 1, yeah. which is an excellent book. Sure, Very sure. Very proud to be on there. I've got a quote on the Tim and Eric DVD. Do you? Yeah, it says Adam Buxton, Six Music. Wow. Skills. Who is that? What do you mean? Adam Buxton, who is that? Uh, he's a little hairy ponce. Is he? Yeah. He's a DJ. That's six right. Six Music DJ. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he loves Tim and Eric. Here's Merry Ghost. With mathematics. Cherry ghost, not merry ghost. What's your big problem, you small hairy ponce? This is mathematics by Cherry Ghost. Cherry Ghost there with uh, the song that they done that we just played called Mathematics. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're into the last hour of our programme and it's time to do some Text the Nation submissions. Are we going to have a kind of a jingle? Yeah, let's have a bit of Jongu Lee's. Oh, James. Jongle is massive. What happened? It just... It just uh, Jingle is massive. Text the nation. Text, 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 text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. What is it about this week, Adam? Would you what? What? What is it about? What is it all about this week, Adam? All right, I get what you're saying. Yeah, all right, bruv. What is it about? Oh, what's that about? Yeah. Okay, so wait, this wait, week. Wait, wait, Adam. What? What is it all about? What is it all about? This week. Yeah, what is it about? It's like a collect, it's like a magazine, right? And they collect all the articles from different papers, right? And they put oh. it in the mag. So you got, it's like an overview of all the different media. That's basically what this week's about. Thanks. <laughs> this week's Text the Nation, though, is all about um, being brutally honest and regretting it. Yeah. Here are some ones what we have got in. This is from Jess. My ex-boyfriend and I were having the who would you sleep with conversation. We should... Uh, uh, describe this a bit. People know what that is, don't they? Maybe we shouldn't go into it in any way. Well, it's, it's, it's with... Program. It's but with, were you to have a physical liaison with someone outside of wedlock? It's something that long-term partners yeah. discuss, isn't it? you would get a kind of uh, a free, free, free pass. ticket for. Yeah, yeah. So my ex-boyfriend and I were having that conversation. I said George Clooney, obviously. Yeah. And he immediately replied, Hannah from work. <laughs> <laughs> That's not silence allowed. silence ensued. It's got to be, um... She does sound attractive, though, doesn't she? Hannah from work. Yeah, sure, she is. Something just about those three words. <laughs> Definitely. I mean... Look at mm -hmm. Hannah's hair. It's so clean. Hannah, she's lovely. Who's your one, incidentally? What do you mean? Your one that you're allowed to we have. We don't really have that conversation. Do you not? No, I don't think we've ever had that conversation. Mm. Well, you're not like a person from Friends, then. 
No, I'm not. <laughs> That's a shame. I'm lacking in dimensionality. Oh, and all people were like people from Friends, <laughs> having all the same. Or do all people? Do all couples have to have that conversation? Yes, you've got to conform to the thing. You've got to have the couple oh, conversation but that I'm they so have rebellious. in Friends and stuff. Here's one from Tim in Dorset. An unnamed woman I was at school with had, let's just say, an issue with her five o'clock shadow. Whilst out drinking, I decided to say, "Why don't you just shave it off?" What? To say she was upset is an understatement. I am an idiot forever for that. Who's that from? Tim in Dorset. He scarred himself and her forever. I mean, no one's come out on top with that exchange. But what was he thinking, though? He was thinking, why doesn't she just shave it off? So was he trying? In his mind, he was sort of offering some practical advice. Yeah, like, hey, you're but a that's woman. Patronizing like in most and of women itself. don't like having beards. Why don't you shave it off? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't think it through. Like, why didn't he go the extra step and think about how she would feel? I mean, she wouldn't want to shave it off anyway, because that just makes it stubbly. Exactly. Wax it off, or one of those burning chemicals. Laser, a bit of like laser. the way I'm sitting. Sure I do. You've got your legs crossed and uh, you're <laughs> like sat sideways to yeah. the desk there. Facing Adam. It's very like nice. some sort of idiot on some kind of Channel 5 news programme. Like an uncle. Yep. <laughs> uh, next, then... I'm not going to sit like that anymore. Tom in Dorset, what were you thinking, though? My goodness. Incidentally, I like ladies. I've mentioned this before. I like ladies with a bit of facial hair. Mm, you like men with a bit of facial hair as well. I like anyone with a bit of facial it's, hair. You just like hair. I like a downy <laughs> moustache on a girl. I really do. Do you go through barber's bins? Mm. And then take bags of it home. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. And store them in a cupboard. I'll, I'll tell you and one thing I really... Out. i tell you one thing I really did do, which my wife discovered the other day and fur-lipped out. I once the first time I grew my beard in 2005 it was really massive and bushy mm. I went to Edinburgh and I was doing this show so I had a crazy pirate beard and then when I came back and I I, I trimmed it I didn't shave the whole thing off but I trimmed it massively and there was you little, kept the bits sure I did in a little bag in a little box you might you might have told us this story before Possibly. and then your wife came across the hairy box yeah she flipped what did she think it was she didn't know what it was she, she probably thought what it was the hell, hell is this areas. and she couldn't figure out what it was and <laughs> she didn't know what part of the body it had come from or well obviously like not you could have been engaged <laughs> in some johnny knoxville style puby beard stunt right and she was saying what are you why are you and when i explained i was like she's like why have you kept this i couldn't give a, a good answer to that question <laughs> uh how would you pronounce the name g-i-l-l -L? gill from essex could be jill it's gill gill during my career as a school teacher, I was on playground duty when a little girl came up to me and said so sweetly, Miss, your bottom looks just like a horse's. Oh, wait, Miss, it is Jill then. Then skipped off happily. Oh, the honesty of children. Your That's bottom quite brutal, isn't your it? Your bottom I mean, looks like a horse's. Of, have, have your kids said really brusque things to you? Kids say the funniest things. No, I was talking the other day about how sophisticated, particularly my eldest son is, with his oh. uh, sense of empathy. Right. So he doesn't say hurtful things. He's very considered. It's very touching the way he thinks about people's feelings. He doesn't do that. Good for him. Well, keep, keep those messages coming in, listeners. The text number is 64046. The email is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. I should say please. Mm -hmm. to the listeners. I mean, otherwise that just sounds like some kind of bossy command. Yeah. Please, please, listeners. Hey, please, come on. Help listeners. us. Listen, sorry about everything, right? Yeah. But help us out. We're, we're, we're a couple of desperate uh, losers. Housewives. Men. We just need a couple of desperate housewives. Um, here's the Chemical Brothers right now. This is the Golden Path. That is uh, Kevin Coyne there, isn't it? Um, singing on the Golden Path. Wayne Coyne. Wayne Coyne. Who's Kevin? Uh, Kevin Coyne's a different guy, isn't he? Different pop man. All the coins, though. You know, they're all jingling, jangling around in the big pop wallet there. <laughs> that was the Chemical Brothers with the Golden Path, uh, with uh, 20p coin singing on top of it. Now, listen, folks, we're going we're gonna to talk about Boggins here right now. And, and don't worry, he's nowhere near the studio, right? We've made sure that he was safely in his kennel before we came in this morning. So if you've got a problem with the way he sounds... Don't worry about it. He's not going to be in here. But we have to deal with the avalanche of correspondence that we've received about our little doggy friend, Chum. And Joe was even at the beginning of the show saying, mm. you know... I was. Perhaps we shouldn't even talk about him. Perhaps we shouldn't even mention him because it has polarised the listeners to such a degree that... Uh, you know. I was berating you for making an executive decision and announcing on our blog that we would continue to cover blogins. Bloggins, bloggins. Um, 
Well, I just said that, you know, we are going to respond to the messages that people are sending in, right? Because we're getting a lot of, a lot of messages about it. Mm. So why would we ignore all the strong feelings of our listeners about the little stinky man, uh, dog? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do know what For you're example, saying. here is here is a letter. This is the kind of letter that basically has unsettled particularly you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> and I think it's unsettled both of us a little bit. This is from Corin Ma uh, Corin Comartin or Comartin, I don't know uh, how you pronounce that. She's from the Department of International Development uh, at the University of Oxford. Clearly an intelligent professional woman. And this uh, message seems absolutely sincere. She says, whenever Boggins is around, my hands automatically reach for the stop play button. So I guess she's listening on the iPlayer or whatever. Not sure why, but I can't stand him and he's been ruining my fun. It would really help if you had a warning uh, that says, warning this show features Boggins. Then I would know that I can give the whole show a miss rather than stop halfway through, completely exasperated and frustrated. I've been a long-standing fan, but this feels like the end of a beautiful affair. And just because of a stupid dog, how could you? Corin Comartin. So the question is, and we've been dis discussing this uh, in between songs, like, what's the deal? Like, to deconstruct this for, in a very literal way, is she being absolutely serious there? Or is she joking a little bit? Is she getting into the spirit of being scandalized by Boggins and, and kind of joking about how much she hates him and taking it to an extreme? Or what? Because we don't want to genuinely shed listeners who are... But then if she was that scandalized by it, she'd be a nutcase, though, wouldn't she? It's not like Boggins is in every link. Yeah, well, there's an ontological issue at the centre of that question that's also at the centre of the whole Boggins debate, What's right? ontological? Uh, it's from the Greek... Uh, of uh, what well, I've got it up on the internet here <laughs> just to make because I knew you'd ask me this. Yeah. It's from the Greek. I can't tell you what Greek uh, it is, but it's about the nature of being, existence, or reality. Ah, right. So um, you know, is she being truthful or is she sort of role playing? Yeah. Is Boggins? I mean, Boggins is a fictional dog. We've made that clear. Yeah. So uh, you know, he's not real, and were we to kill him, mm -hmm. that would not be real. And you see there's an ontological question at the core of both questions. It's so weird because th th there's such a sophisticated level of role-playing and fantasy involved with Boggins. Mm. And, in, and with the interaction that we're getting from listeners as well, some people very, seemingly very sincere about wanting to kill him, other people seemingly very sincere about loving him and writing songs for him and stuff like that. It's very hard to pick apart the fantasy and the reality now, they've become enmeshed in a trouble, troubling way. And what, I mean, it freaks me out that we actually would lose a lot of listeners just because of, uh, of this. Dog. Well, I think there's two things here. Some people yeah. don't like the sound physically. They sure. find it irritating. Other people think to have a sort of fictional dog on a Saturday morning radio show yeah. is maybe a slightly you sort of cheesy and tired, predictable thing to happen because there have been many fictional dogs uh, in radio history, Many. haven't there? I can think of one. Well, there's been one. Uh, there, I bet you there's more than one. I bet you if people, if I bet you people could come up with other DJ dogs. Yeah, but he's not. They haven't been as sweet as Boggins. No, or as stinky. Or as smelly. Boggins has his own skill set. But anyway, yes. Uh, so people might think that it's a it's a silly Saturday morning kids mm. show type thing to do, right? Mm. So I a, a I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> B it doesn't dominate the entire show, so if you had a problem with it, just, you know, deal with it. Yeah. Like, it's and not see, like... it's not as if this fictional dog is fictional. Right. Is it? Oh, don't get into that. <clears throat> For example, here's a message from Beth Jackson. She's aged 10. Dear Adam and Joe, me and my dad were listening to your show the other day, and you said you were going to put Boggins down. And please don't, <laughs> because <laughs> please I love don't. him, and even though he eats poo and stuff... He could stay with me. That's from Beth Jackson, age 10. She says, P.S. My dad loves your show and he would love it if you read this out for me. Three kisses there. Thank you, Beth. And that's sweet. She's listening with her dad. And you're, are you worried that it's just going to become a kid's show? <laughs> well, I think younger listeners like Boggins more than older listeners. Right. Older S listeners are cruel and cynical and want to see the fictional dog slaughtered. I'm not sure. Younger listeners are full of joie de vivre and optimism. And they want to see the dog thrive and live and cleaned up. Medically and, dealt with. Yeah. And then here's a message from Anna. And she says, um, and this is more about the kind of bonding effect of Boggins. 
Hello, Adam and Joe. I just moved to Brighton with my bloke, Tom, and he introduced me to your great show. Being a new fan, I was curious if anyone else was listening in my office, which is one of those massive open plan floors with everyone huddled around their own piece of grey carpet space. Anyway, so I said to my colleague, I thought quite quietly, what do you think of Boggins? To test him out. And suddenly, 60 people across the office started shouting, Love him! And no! Boggins needs to die! It lasted an hour. Do you believe that? My boss took me away for a quiet word about disrupting the working day. Why would you make that up? I don't know. I do, that just seems too good to be true. I tell you what would really convince yeah. is if people took their little, you know, a mobile phone audio note recorders into an office uh-huh. and shouted something about Boggins. Right. Then we could get a genuine response. Right. Do you know what I mean? So what would conclude the Boggins issue? Like if one, if someone said, if someone was to say, mm. get rid of the dog or carry on chatting about the dog. Well, look, it, it, it's, it's not up to us. The dog comes in here yeah. when the door is opened we have to deal with it. I mean, it's not really our dog. So if we were to put it him down, mm. then we might get into trouble, for instance. I think it's beyond our control. But if there was one person that, so, uh, that, that said, you know, you should get rid of him, mm. who would that be and that you would listen to? James, the producer, I think. Right. I think James has the ultimate decision on Boggins. What about Gillian Reynolds? <laughs> Gillian Reynolds? Yeah, the critic. The radio critic of The Telegraph. Yeah. Do you think she has the authority? She has probably a historical overview a broader perspective of radio and its various tropes and things that work and don't. I've, well, I always remember her saying in a very nice review... She's I very s- supportive of yeah. us as well. She said, I started listening to Adam and Joe and I don't plan to stop. She said that about a year ago. But I wonder if Boggins made a stop. Mm. We should find out. Maybe you know? we should try and get in touch with her. Yeah, that's what worries me. Mm. So there you go. And, uh, you know, you'll notice that there was no <laughs> little dog. Why are you laughing? It's the way he said, so there you go. As if you just finished some sort of report from a front it line. It is! It's important <laughs> political debate! That's what this show's all about! <laughs> Here's Devandra Bernhardt! So, uh, this is a track about Roxy Music, and it's a quite a good Roxy Music impression that he does in this. I mean, he's a stone's throw away from Brian Ferry vocally anyway, isn't he, Bernhardt? Bernhardt. And this is called 16th and Valencia Roxy Music. Pharaoh Monch. There. You knew all about Pharaoh Monch, John. Monch to Munch. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. I've never heard of Pharaoh Monch before. He's good. But that's such an exact recreation of a 70s sound, though, isn't it? It's probably a sample. Right. Une simple. And so what are you talking it's about? It's like a piece of selection from the song. You can't do that. It's not legal. You can No, now. then you can't do that. Or you can't just go take someone else's song and use it in your song. Do you? That is not legal. What are we doing now? Are we doing some change? I've got a free play coming up, boy. Oh, okay. And I'm going to play some David... David. People were complaining about the fact that we seem to play a lot of late period Bowie. Mm. We don't focus on the classic years, which I would say, broadly speaking, and I think this is uncontroversial, are pretty much all his 70s albums, right? I mean, he had, more than any other artist I can think of, a clear run of absolute solid gold smash albums in the 70s. I mm. think... Mm. Every single one of them had at least something pretty great on it. You know, even Pin Ups, which is his album of covers, which is, um, you know. Hey, hey. I love it, I'm saying. off. It's great. You're so rude. Gosh, you when did rude. you last release an album? Face. There. When did you last release a run of classic albums in the 70s? Hey? I, I did it uh, in the what 70s. What kind of a high horse are you standing on, Box? <laughs> uh, that's true. That's a very good point, Joe. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Adam Soap Boxton. Yeah. But that listen, was tortured, wasn't it? Other no, it's good. Thanks. <laughs> other people like Jonathan Ross, he plays a lot of classic seventies Bowie, right? So right. I thought it would be nice if we focused on the less often played um, parts of his magnificent canon. Um, and I'm going to play a track from Let's Dance. And Let's Dance was the first Bowie album that I remember being very disappointed by. Now that seems strange, doesn't it? Because it's a great album, but it scrambled my circuits. It was the first eighties album. It was the first Bowie album I was excited by. It wasn't the first 80s one, because the eight Scary Monsters was 1980, I think. But um, And you really loved it, did you? Yeah, I really loved it. Because it was all Nile Rodgers and right up your yeah. alley. Yeah. I didn't get it completely, mm, right? I mean, well, the, you wouldn't, would you? No, because I'm no. very slow and uh, <laughs> linear in my thinking. But uh, I love it now, obviously, and this is one of my favourite tracks. So I'm not going to have enough time to play any of it now that you've waffled it. for well, so you're, long. Now you're waffling. <laughs> now it's you that does the waffle. Here's shaking. Oh, waffle, waffle, waffle. I was a was a I was a was a was 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 Love it. David Bowie there with Shake It and we're a little bit late for the news but here it is. It's 11.30, BBC Six Music. Manic Street Preachers. 
From Despair to Where, is that what it's called? Yeah. Saddam and Joe on BBC Six Music. I've got this note on my script, my list of things to talk about, uh, about Lilo games. Uh Uh-huh. I really want to chat about it but it's winter now yeah and so it doesn't seem appropriate but it's appropriate just to remember the summer you even wanted to do it as a text to nation i didn't did you? that's two lilo games <laughs> i love lilo games <laughs> i want to talk about it what about lilo and stitch i don't like that so much mm. do you think it, it i mean it's, it could be a nice thing to talk about because it's obviously quite wintry now what about people who hate lilos and might switch off if they start if we start talking about lilos i don't think lilos divide people like boggos do well yeah boggos the doggos dear adam and joe i've been a long-standing fan but when you started talking about lilos that was really the last straw i what's had to your... smash my radio against my husband's face what's your favorite lilo game <laughs> in a swimming pool. Oh, um... Do you do the one where you build a... You try and build a bridge across the swimming pool with lilos? And then try and run and across try it. And run across it. It can be very dangerous because if the pool's too narrow and you slip, you could hit your head. Smash! Uh, you have to be very careful. And when you land on the first lilo, you don't know which way you're going to fall. Sure it is. So you could, there's a risk you could fall backwards and hit your head. So do be very careful. Classic lilo fun. You also have to have friends in the pool holding the lilos together so they don't drift apart before you make the run. You also have yeah. to apply for a lilo license. You have to have a lilo well license. Well, before you stop you like lilo that game? Games. Sure, everyone loves that Do you game. like the game where you pile uh, lots of lilos up and try and stand on top of them? That's a good game. Do you ever try and stand up on one lilo? Yeah. See how long you can stand up sure for? Sure, I do. It's impossible. No one can do it. I can. Do you ever try and push the lilo it's under a big lilo, it's the double water lilo. and Are we make talking it... about single lilo here? Uh, or double as, lilo? Well, I try and buy as many cheap lilos as I can yeah, for a yeah, holiday. Yeah. I mean, they puncture easily, but they're cheap. Push it under the water and what? It's good to have quantity. Push it under the water and what? Do you ever try and push it right under the water so it sits on the bottom of the pool? We're still talking about lilos here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. What? I know, I'm thinking about something else. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You do. I do do. You see, so that's the uh, end of the do. lilo conversation. That's good, man. Do you, ever, do you ever race them? Yeah, that's my favourite game. You lie on them on your belly and then do the forward no, uh, you, crawl, I, the, I, the front crawl. Sit, I sit in the middle so that I, both ends go up. Like the, the oh, front you're one of those, are you? Sure, sure. I see. And so it's like you're in a little floaty car. Yes. Yeah, so, the, so the front and back go up. Paddle yourself but then along you can't with both see hands. A, it's like a car if the bonnet's flipped up. You, you put, can't see where you're no, going. You position yourself so the bonnet you is not lean obscuring your vision. You less streamlined. You see, I would be beating you on my lying flat on my lilo yeah i'm terribly aerodynamic are you really i'm like a really long plank <laughs> <laughs> oh if you're lying down it's a ho- totally different thing well it's a lilo not a sit low oh dear got so angry <laughs> you really hurt me you really hurt my feelings <laughs> good <laughs> should you have a bit of music and then come back with text and she's talking about lilo jeez oh, now I've finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's the air coming out of Joe's conversation. Ha ha ha! Here's Passion Pit. I win! With little secrets. Uh, that's almost too rich a confection. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Too many delicious ingredients. I like it. I think it was fun. Yeah, I thought it was fun too. Fun for the kids. But so, so much fun that I was almost sick. Too much fun. Like the first line of Cheryl Cole's um, current pop hit is something like... Too too much of anything makes you sick. Fairly true. I mean, that's true. That is a truism. That is practically true, and there's much truth to it. But as the first line of a pop song, am I? I mean, I'm very literal minded. But all that makes me think of is someone vomiting, and that's not what you want in a pop song, though, is it? Mm, the kids love vomiting. That's true. They do. It's a very they? visceral experience for them. It's the big it's vomit exciting. market. She's going for yeah. the pukers. The, the puke market. <laughs> hey, listen. Shall we do one more quick text the nation? Yeah. Shall we have a, a jingle? Can you manage a jingle? Because there's quite a good one here. Text the nation. Text. 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 Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. This is a chap called Peter. I'm going to keep his surname secret just in case we are exposing you know, a vulnerable part of his existence here. (laughs) He says, a very famous American musician friend of mine, a very famous American musician friend of his, a few years back, asked what I thought of his new record and that he'd respect my honest opinion, as always. I told him that instead of making a double album, maybe he should have made it a single record with just the good songs on it. (laughs) I told him that to me, I thought a lot of the songs were filler and not in any way vital. He thanked me for my honesty. We hung out for the rest of the night. Then later that week, I saw him interviewed on TV. And when he was asked about the new record, he rather dejectedly said, 
Well, I was really proud of it, but apparently people think we should have just made it a single album and dropped the rest, so I don't know. Who could it be? He looked a bit gutted. I felt really bad about it, yeah. but have never brought it up again with him. Who's a big double album meister? Could be Axl Rose, could be uh, Prince, the Purple Ponce. But I can't see Prince being too hurt by that kind of, or seeking counsel in that way anyway. But that's usually good advice. I mean, there are so many times when that would have been brilliant advice for someone. Just chop it down, get get rid of the filler, just keep the killer. Our general stance is to lie when a friend asks yeah. you whether you think anything's good or not. You I mean, just tell them it's really good. Don't you think, like, if you, if you do, if you have a friendly relationship with someone, if they're asking you on a friendly basis, mm. what did you think of this or that that I just done? You are supportive. That's that's my default yeah, yeah. position. I don't see any point, unless you're being paid for your professional mm. opinion, like if you're a producer I or something. I tell you a good approach. Just be balanced. Yeah. So m before you say the bad things, think of two good things. Well, exactly. Focus on the good stuff. Yeah. But then sometimes it's too obvious that that's what's happening. You know? Peter says, now, when any bands ask me what I think, and I've got criticism in mind, I deliver the stock answer. Quote, I can see what you're doing with it. It's just not my cup of tea. Mm. End quote. Is that any better? I think that's kind of a little bit soft peddling and that's maybe even harsher. It's hard to hear. But again, you know, he's in a professional situation there, though. So that's fair enough. I wonder who that musician was. Oh. I'm going to take a look at that surname. Anyway, you can uh, contribute to Text the Nation uh, by email during the week, adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk, and your submission could appear in Retro Text the Nation next week. Imagine. Imagine. No texts during the week, please. You'll be wasting your money and your time. <laughs> right now, this here's... is a bit of a free play. Oh, yeah, play. this is yours. Yeah, this is uh, Paul Williams from the Bugsy Malone soundtrack, oh. and, and I warrant that the songs Paul Williams wrote for Bugsy Malone are the best suite of songs specially composed for a film ever. I wouldn't challenge that. What That's about, a daring statement. What about Grease, though? I, dis I, I prefer Bugsy Malone to Grease well, myself. a lot of different artists on the Grease soundtrack, though. So, mm, exactly. Yeah. It's not so pure. No. This is uh, called Bad Guys. Lovely, lovely stuff. That's Bat for Lashes with Priscilla. Well, folks, that's it. Uh, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to our show this week. We've got an important announcement to make before we leave you, though. Yeah, from the 5th of December, this very programme will start an hour later at 10am and go on until 1am. So it's exactly the same show, just forward shifted by an hour, giving us an extra hour in bed. Yes. Giving Black Squadron an extra hour in bed. I mean, we need to discuss and think about this because obviously it's it's less impressive to get up at 10. Come on. Well, it is. I mean, it's an hour less impressive. Yeah. But... So should they still be Black Squadron? Uh, you know, we've really got to think that through. And but 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 next week... How many weeks until we are at 10? Next week is our last week. OK, so next week we have to decide. Um, yeah. Next week, maybe it should be an ultimate Black Squadron command. Sure. Something that really pushes them. Yeah. But we're not going to disband the squadron, though, right? Well, we need to discuss it. Oh, my God. I fear change. Um, and George Lamb is going to be taking over on weekend breakfast, stepping in instead of Yare. Uh, everything else will remain the same. Although Richard Bacon is joining the family. His show starts at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. That'll be in a couple of weekends' time, I think. Uh, so, wow, it's all changing. You got. We're going to be crossing over with Lamb in the morning. Slamming the lamb. Slamming the lamb. How's that going to be? Well, we're, we're going to find out, aren't we? Oh, he's very confident. He's very confident. And cocky and cheeky. Handsome as well. I think. I think uh, he'll walk I've, all over our faces. I've got a feeling I'm going to fall in love with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stay tuned for Liz Kershaw. She's coming up. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you to everybody who's contributed to Text the Nation and in other respects. Yeah. And don't forget our podcast will be available on Mondays. Monday now? evenings. Yeah. yeah. And this show is also available during the week on Listen Again. And pay a visit to the blog. Thanks for caring. I love you, bye! Bye! I gotta test the...